DNS server and the router, by default, if your workstation is set to DHCP, it'll pass that I, that DNS server to the workstation. So if you do an IP config you know, on your workstation, you'll have the DNS servers that the router gave you. But mm -hmm. you can always go into your IP settings and you can leave the IP address check for obtain automatically, but you can change DNS to use specific ones. You got it. So that's too easy to bypass. <laughs> too easy. Um, so I don't consider open DNS a, a solution. And I don't and if and if a company wants to use it, I tell them well, yeah, that's fine. We can I can certainly set it up for you, but I'm not going to guarantee that it's I, I tell them that what I just told you, it, it's too easy to bypass and I don't I tell them, don't be under the illusion that this is going to block what you want it to block all the time. All right, so we'll investigate possibly in a future show the advanced pictures of the page to see what it offers. But uh, so we'll look into that into the future. So he also says on his email that some uh, some clients are moving to all Mac computers. That's right. So that's nice. Um, that's nice. Of course, uh, you're, you're looking, if you wanted to get a server for a Mac, you could get a Mac server. The Mac mini comes with a server for relatively cheap. I want to say it's like $700 or $800 um, for the, an Apple server, uh, for a Mac mini running Apple server. It's it's under a thousand dollars. And one of the nice things is that's unlimited licenses. So where you're paying for a lot of licenses on um a Windows server, you are not paying any licenses for um an Apple server. It's as many it's unlimited um out the box. So all right, cool. Uh let's move on to our next email once I can find a proper window. Let's see here. This one is from Steve Dubs. Matt, first, don't stop making a show. It is, in my opinion, one of the Steve's best. Not enough buttering up. I need to see how you handle Apple phones on a server. Here are my questions that you can use on a show for answer whenever you have time. Is there a workaround to the iPhone sleep shutting down the phone? Is there a workaround for VPN disconnecting when the phone locks? Slide lock screen 15 seconds. Later, it disconnects. Let's go ahead and answer these questions on the fly. So for those folks that don't know what he's talking about, uh, can you kind of elaborate on the iPhone going to sleep? Okay, so if you don't touch your iPhone, of course, for a few seconds, it's going to just um, go into a, the battery saving mode where you got to wake it up, press the home button or start button to wake it back up again. When that happens... There's some certain things that happen to save battery life, and one of those is if you have a VPN connection on your phone to a to a server or or to any other VPN endpoint, that VPN is going to be disconnected. Um, now, uh, what I've read, there is no workaround for that. That's by design, because if the phone went to sleep and it kept the VPN alive by a VPN keep alive, you know, sending traffic back and forth. Uh, the battery would drain too quickly on the phone. So when the phone goes to sleep, the VPN will be disconnected. <laughs> and there's, there's no way around that. All right. Are you using RPC over HTTPS, OMA, or VPN to get a change? Uh, I, well, think, a, I think you might have OWA, right? Well, they have, well, they have Outlook Mobile Access. Gotcha. Okay. Um, which is, it depends. If we have a client, if they want a VPN, we we always tell clients, give them a choice of having a VPN or not having a VPN. Um, a few clients have chosen to go with a VPN, but it is more work for them to connect a VPN client and then run Exchange. Right, it's more inconvenient for them. <sighs> right, and of course, you can always tell people, yes, yeah, security is inconvenient. That's what makes it more secure, but... Most of our clients, if they have a notebook or if they have whatever they're using to check mail out of the office, we do use uh, what's called Outlook over HTTPS, Outlook Anywhere. So it makes an SSL connection back to the server and you open up your Outlook and you're an Exchange client no matter where you are. The only difference being if you're using a VPN, you 
you connect the VPN and then you don't need to set the Outlook Anywhere options because at that point you're just like an internal user and you can have the same exchange set up, meaning you don't have to put the settings in to connect remotely at that point. Okay. And then for the people who don't want to buy Outlook at all, of course, there's always Outlook Web Access. <laughs> That's true. I mean, it it it, it is... It does a job for a lot of people, especially if you have folks that work in the field and, um, you know, that hook up to your McDonald's Wi-Fi or whatever the case may be. You know, it does serve its purpose. Yeah. Next question. Are you using a front-end exchange server and a back-end server, or are you using a single server which is set up to be your domain controller, file sharing, exchange, and global catalog? Now, with small business server, that's all one box. Am I correct in saying that, Matt? That's right. With small okay. business server, the, well, the domain controller, exchange, global catalog, it's got to be, it's all the same server. You can add additional servers for file servers, but uh, exchange, domain controller, global catalog, those are all the same box. Now, in a bigger environment, you'll find, yes, that you will have several exchange boxes in the front end and, and a back end. And why why would you use it for front end and a back end server? What's the... the, the uh, well, yeah, the new purpose. exchange has different roles, so you can dedicate, you know, if you have a lot of traffic coming in, it decreases the workload on a server, and then the you can have the front-end server just directing all the traffic to other back-end servers where the databases are. Um, we don't have, I think we have one, one or two clients doing that, because really in a small, if you're supporting small businesses, you're not, you're going to have a single server solution. <laughs> Um, now I'm on correction. You with a small business server, you can have other servers that are domain controllers and global catalog servers. The small business server has to be the root of the forest, but you can't add additional. They won't run small business server; they'll run straight server. But you can have additional domain controllers. Right, but in most common environments, you would say they they just have the one server for. <sighs> Right. And if they right. And the reason is cost. I mean small businesses, of right. course, they they don't want to buy more than one server. So uh, in in many cases it's hard it's a hard sell to give them one server. So Yeah, I mean and to give you a rough idea in the environment I work in during the from eight to five, we have three three hundred and thirty eight servers. So I mean that just gives you an idea of how large it can scale up to. But in a small business, as Matt said, mostly under one bot. Next question. Are you using Small Business Server 2003, 2008, Standard 2003 R2, or Standard 2008 Server? Personally, in our office, we're on Small Business Server 2008. Um, but I have all those servers he's asked. And I've, we've put them all in different circumstances, including uh, SBS 2011, mm -hmm. which he didn't mention. Um, so, yeah, we use all those things. And then also, and what's the one that is a little bit cheaper? The starter? The 2011 Essentials, mm -hmm. which is up for 25 users. It does not include Exchange. There you go. Next question. Which version of Exchange are you using? 2003 or newer? We are on server 2003 R2. What is Change 2003? Single server. Uh, well, so with Small Business Server 2008, we're on Exchange 2007. Okay. Uh, which is the lowest version of Exchange anybody should run. If you're on Exchange or 3, really, it's time to upgrade. And if you're su supporting these small businesses, you will see all these different flavors, all these different combinations. I mean, it's just it's just the way it is. Um, would it be nice for everyone to run the latest and greatest and latest service packs? Sure. But you will walk into offices where you will see different flavors and combinations. You know what I'm seeing a lot? People who are still on uh, SBS 2003. One thing that SBS 2003 does not support, uh, Apple Mail or any Apple computer running any version really of Outlook 2011 even. They they, they can't connect to an Exchange 03 server. It's got to be Exchange 07 or later. And with more and more people getting Macs, it's more and more people who want to use Exchange mail on their Mac, and with O3, it's not going to work. Sure. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, is there a end of life coming for 2003 anytime soon? I don't think so. No, nah, because it's so popular. 
and being used. But um, for different flavors, that being said, you want to make sure that you are, because um, you are a gold, the partner. Right, Matt? With Microsoft for this? Uh, for no. no, 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 no. Oh, are you not? Hmm. No, a gold partner. Boy, I, I don't think you got to meet a lot of requirements and jump through a bunch of hoops for that. Maybe that was a different Matt Rainey in a different podcast. I have no idea. But maybe so. He got jumped a lot of hoops through that and really I don't okay. have time for all that. <laughs> well I'm trying to get at with, with different flavors, you know, you it's nice to have the support when you need it. Um let's let's move on. So I don't know. We are a partner. We are a partner, right? So I I can call Microsoft as a partner on the support line okay. and get help. And a, anybody who's doing this should at least become a uh, Microsoft what's called a registered partner. If you're a Microsoft registered partner and you subscribe to the action pack, you get a number you can call for partner support and that's unlimited and free. Um, so that's one thing you need to have. And it does cost for the action pack, but you get unlimited calls to Microsoft for support. So, and it is worth it. I guarantee you it'll be a Friday night, 6 PM. Something is not working and you want to go home and drink a nice cold beverage. And this, right. this is when this helps. I've right. done it. We've so, all done it. Yeah, you call the number, the partner support, they get, you get a tech assigned to you, and they don't hang up till it's fixed. Yep. And sometimes it's a simple, oh, we're aware of the issue. Here's a hot fit. What's your email address? Bounce the bots, and, and you're good to go. So, Next question. Do you receive push email on your iPhone when it's locked? And do you, do you also receive it, I assume, when the iPhone's asleep? Okay. Yes, but it only true push email, it, like Exchange. Exchange is push, so that I do get mail. No, um, and I guess he actually he asks something. No, he doesn't. I'm gonna say one thing about that. I think. Okay, so email on your phone. So if it's Exchange, you have push. It'll work. Now, if you have something else. There is a setting in your phone that you can check um, as far as the iPhone. I'm sure they have something similar on the Droid. But in your mail account, if you let's say you got a pop account, um, if you go to the properties of the account, by def um, so I go to account, and then I go to uh, it, no, advanced, SMTB, no. Okay, so there, I can't find it right now. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So go to, in, in iPhone, mail contacts calendars, uh, scroll down, fetch new data. It's going to be on push. And in here, more than likely, push is going to be, I'm sorry, go to advanced on that screen. Okay. Uh, it's, I have so many accounts on my phone. So let me start over. Mail con settings, mail contacts, and calendars. You'll see your list of accounts. Scroll down. You'll see an option for fetch new data. Click on that. Uh, push would have to be turned on. But below that, it's got fetch. And it says, this schedule below is used when push is off or for applications which do not support push. For better battery life, fetch less frequently. And fetch, by default, is set to manually, which means... Let's, on my phone, I've got like three exchange accounts and, I don't know, three pop accounts. Okay. When I open mail to see my exchange mail, my other mail checks It's for its mail, and mail comes in. Okay? But it, it doesn't – on my pop accounts, I don't just get a notification that I have new – I don't have the sound. No, it doesn't check. When I open the mail app, it checks for mail. And it checks in the pop accounts and mail comes in. So there is an option if you're using a pop account to change this to every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, or hourly. So it won't come in right when it comes in, but every 15 minutes it'll check even when the phone is asleep. Now, of course, if you're having to check every 15 minutes, that's more work your phone is doing. That's more or less your battery is going to work. Right. So I've seen some people who say, my mail never comes in, let's open mail account. But well, that's this setting here. It's the default set to manual. Um, but a true exchange account, push, uh, even Gmail set up as an exchange account will notify you of new mail 
through active sync because it's pushing it to your phone. Your phone's not having to go check it. Okay. 